Coming up, a stick has gone missing. Someone stole my stick! Gut sludge. Yep. That's bad. And how bad can the valve stem seals be? Yeah, completely loose. Aloha and welcome to part two of Project X5. In this episode, we need to address the oil burning issue that this car has. Let me demonstrate. You're sitting at the traffic light, chugging your green chai macchiato smoothie. You hit the throttle to set off and... Holy shitness. The guy behind you in a Toyota, he's laughing his ass off and choking at the same time. We can't have that, so let's bring it inside and fix it. But first, we need to make this engine bay look a bit less dusty. Nothing special, just a little bit cleaner. This 2009 E70 X5 is sporting N62 4.8 liter V8 engine, which has a common issue with worn out valve stem seals. The oil leaks past the valves into the combustion chamber and onto the cats, and when the car idles and you hit the throttle, it burns that oil and you get bluish smoke from the exhaust. If you're lucky, it could also be that the CCV diaphragm is torn, which will also cause blue smoke as the oil vapors get sucked into the intake. But given the age and mileage of this car, 183,000 kilometers, yes, that's not a lot. There's no chance that the valve stem seals are good. So in this episode, we are going to replace them. First, we'll start by draining the oil and dropping the oil pan to inspect it for the usual stuff, such as nails and timing chain guides. And if everything looks good, we'll proceed with the top end teardown. Gonna remove the reinforcement plate. Oh. <sighs> Looks like it's been a minute since this car had an oil change. Ooh, that looks disgusting. That is really black. The car is cold, hence the slow drainage. The drain plug is stripped. I need to replace that. Oh my! Do I need a breaker bar? Really nasty oil. Ah, oh, come on. See that? how the filter looks mangled. That is a clear indication that the car didn't have an oil change in a very long time. Other than being sludgy and disgusting, it looks good. The oil is clean. There are no metal shavings in the oil filter cap either. Put the cap back on. It doesn't appear that this oil pan was ever off. There are no marks on the bolts at all. Now you're gonna remove the oil pan. This all looks fairly clean. This is good news. Just a little bit sludgy. I mean, the car hasn't been driven properly since 2019 or something like that. I think that's what the guy told me when it was imported and he was not able to get tooth. So we have a lot of condensation in the oil as well. I mean, these engines, they don't suffer from failed timing chain guides at all, pretty much unlike the M62. N62 is pretty good in that department. So this is absolutely clean. Now we're gonna temporarily put it back on and go up top and start replacing valve stem seals. Donde style stick. Where's my stick, man? I know I didn't throw it away. It was like the most useful thing in the shop. Someone stole my stick! I believe this is my L stick, but someone shortened it. It's been cut. It was longer. I think my landlord chopped it off. So now it's not long enough. I want to prop the hood open so we have more space to work with. This is called service position. Nah, nah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah professional tool and the hood is pretty light because it's aluminium these are trash falling apart
this is the type of engineering that I like. The tab here, see that? Just fold it in and pull out the E-fan super easily. This cover here is broken. Oh, it has the old dipstick, yes! So looking for that. <laughs> Valtronic motor, gonna mark them, bank one. There's a lot of dust here. I'm gonna blow this out a little bit. Now we're gonna jump on bank two, remove the coils, and then we can get this entire wiring harness out of the way. I lost my pliers now. No! This is like the third tool that I lost. The diaphragm looks brand new, no tears. All right, so I can go on the side like that. Now I need to disconnect camshaft position sensors, eccentric shaft sensor. You know what? I'm gonna remove the windshield cowl now because I wanna repaint it and we also need to replace this plastic trim here and I don't want this dust to end up in the engine. So we're gonna do that now. Gonna put a piece of tape here so I know where to reinstall the wiper arms. There we go. Ah, goodbye. So I got other clips as well now. This was probably replaced at one point, but it just faded again. Looks like I'll need to remove the entire wiper mechanism. All right, that was fairly easy to do. Now I'm gonna drain the coolant. We're going to be overhauling the cooling system as well as part of preventive maintenance. There's a drain plug at the bottom of the radiator. Just I'm gonna remove coolant cap. Coolant looks horrible. Ugh. It's pink! Why is it pink? It's wrong coolant, man. All right, let that drain. Now you're gonna start disconnecting coolant hoses. Sensor. There you go. <clears throat> now I can take the radiator out. Nothing is connected to it. And we're gonna have more space. This looks like original radiator, which is nice and it's all aluminium. So no real need to replace it. This is what happens when you use wrong coolant. You get this nasty lime scale or whatever it is all over the place. BMWs, they use blue coolant. That, that's not blue. So we're gonna flush this radiator later. I should have probably mentioned it, but there's no need to do any of this if you're just replacing valve stem seals, but I'm gonna be doing a million other while in their items like belts, pulleys, water pump, thermostat. So it's just easier to take everything apart now. I'm gonna remove the belts. Oh, will you? Oh, please don't tell me this is one of those stupid belts that don't have the tensioner. Yeah, that's affirmative. Yep. Now we're gonna remove the valve covers. We need to unbolt the dipstick from the head. All right, that's the bolt. There's a small nut holding the dipstick in to the oil pan. 
gonna try and remove that and then take it out completely so we can replace the o-ring as well problem is the x5 is so tight in space because of the four-wheel drive thing got the ratchet around it perfect and that's the nut removed that's the plate it's out So jumping around eccentric shaft sensor is always fun when there's not enough space. Oh, there it is. That was a bit of a faff. Looks pretty good in here. There's no heavy varnish or sludge buildup anywhere. This is a perfect opportunity to inspect everything, make sure the camshafts don't have any excessive wear, and also inspect the Valtronic gear that it's not damaged or anything like that. That one looks perfect. So let's go ahead and remove valve cover on bank two as well. Disconnect this connection here. Coolant lines that go to the heater core. It's gonna make a life a bit easier to remove the valve cover. Oh, break the seal. Sneak that underneath. I retrieved my tool earlier. Oh. Collected the fuel and preferably change gloves. Plug the fuel line, we don't want any contaminants in there. I think we'll disconnect the positive cable as well. The battery is disconnected, by the way. Never going to find that again, never. This is what, third or fourth fuel that I dropped into the engine bay? I only managed to retrieve one of them. Maybe I can finally get my pliers out. Oh, yes. All right, one tool retrieved. Time to use the 10 mil socket that I found in Project Chicago engine bay. Oh, wow. oh this is going to be fun to put back on. Bank twine, equally awesome. No abnormal wear anywhere. The camshaft looks good. The Valtronic gear looks good. You can see the timing chain guide over there. It looks good as well. At this point, two paths to choose from how you're going to replace the valve stem seals. Number one is to buy or rent those expensive special tools that are going to allow you to compress the valve springs, dance around the camshafts and replace the valve seals. I don't really like that method, nor do I have those tools. And I think if you go down that route, it's just going to take forever. I read online that people sometimes take three or four days to do it that way, which is just ridiculous. There's not a lot of space here and there's this Valtronic junk in the way, so you can't even see some of the valves. I don't know how people do it and I don't want to kill my back. So we're going to go with method number two, which is to remove the camshafts. And then we have a clear shot at the valves and we can use some generic valve compression spring tools to replace the seals. That method is more involved because you have to remove upper timing covers, the venos, and of course the camshafts, and mess with the timing. Not a lot of people want to deal with that, but I've done this about 158 times on Alpina, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. I have the timing tool kit over there. So we're going to remove a lot more parts, but I think in the end we're going to save time as well. So let's begin. Let's get the spark plugs out. And the spark plug tubes! Come on out! No, oh, that wasn't tight at all. You can see where it's burning oil, how the spark plug is a bit black on the side. Look at that! Nice cylinder walls. Yep, mighty fine. Nice and clean, man, nice and clean. We're gonna do one bank at a time, so we're gonna start with bank one. We need to remove the vacuum pump, vano solenoids, and the timing cover. And we need to replace this vacuum pump because it's leaking and it made quite a mess here. Everything is covered in oil. And this is where it leaks. It doesn't leak on the seal. It leaks from the middle of the pump where the two halves meet. Next, vano solenoids. We can mark them, the connectors, even though you can't really flip them around because the cable goes exactly where it needs to go. Pry the vano solenoids out. Man, that is dirty. Look how dirty it is. Crazy. 
So these definitely need a good cleaning. I didn't drive this car a lot, so it probably didn't run right under full throttle. That's bad. And you know what we're gonna do with this, right? Now we're gonna remove the oil sprayer bar, which is clipped into place and has one bolt over there. 13. This is a special bolt that allows oil to flow around it. All right. Now we need to rotate the engine and get it to top dead center. The engine is a TDC when the exhaust camshaft lobe on cylinder number one is pointing diagonally up. And on the intake side, this lobe is pointing diagonally down. Now we're gonna rotate the crank clockwise until the hole on the vibration dumper lines up with the hole on the timing cover. Then we can slot in our tool and also make sure that the camshafts, lobes, and cylinder number one are pointing in the right direction. So it should be really easy to turn it. Spark plugs out. All right, the hole is coming up and the camshafts are not pointing correctly. So another rotation. And now the crank is locked. Now you can see that the exhaust cam lobe on cylinder number one is pointing diagonally up and on the intake side diagonally down. This is the timing kit for the N62 engine. Now you're gonna check the timing of the engine, which has to be correct, otherwise you would throw timing codes, but we're gonna do it just for the sake of it. First, get a 30 mil spanner, get it on the intake camshaft and rotate it against direction of rotation, so anti-clockwise to make sure that the Vanos is in its locked position, which it is. And then on the exhaust side, you have to rotate it clockwise and also make sure it's locked which it is. Then get the timing tool. This is the intake side and the tool needs to sit flush on the cylinder head on both sides. And that's spot on. And then exhaust side, spot on as well, sitting flush. So now we can start removing Vanus units. Remove the upper timing guide. Now you're gonna remove Vanus units and these are specific. You can see this one says in as intake and then this one is specific for bank one exhaust because of this notch here for the vacuum pump. Now we need to counter hold the camshaft and loosen Vanus bolt. First, we're going to remove the intake camshaft with Valtronic contraption. We need to rotate the cam until the lobe and cylinder one is positioned horizontally. We are rotating clockwise in the direction of rotation. Pretty much like that. If you don't do that, you can damage the camshaft when we start pulling it out and releasing the bolts. It's very important to keep exact orientation of things. For example, this cap here needs to go back in the exact same position in the exact same direction. So it says LE1 on it, and that lettering is pointing towards the intake side. So you can mark it or take a picture for reference. Now we can release the rest of the nuts going from outside to in. Carefully. And there we have the valves, the rocker arms, the lifters underneath them. Should be much easier to replace seals this way. To remove the exhaust camshaft, we need to put it in removal position first. So we need to rotate the cam anti-clockwise until lobes on cylinder number two are pointing up. It's gonna, it's gonna snap into place like that. Now the tension is released and we can safely remove the camshaft. Here it is very important to keep orientation of the caps as you remove them. They are all labeled one, two, three, four, five. 
and the lettering needs to point towards the intake as well. I'm going to release the nuts. And here you can see that they're all marked, two, three, four. I know this might look scary, but trust me, it's not that complicated. And this took me about 40 minutes to do to remove the camshafts. Would be even quicker if I weren't filming. Now you can either remove the rocker arms or swing them out of the way. I think I'm gonna remove them because that way I can clean them too. But again, very important to put them back in the exact same place you took them out. So I'm gonna start labeling. So this is going to be one and the end is gonna be eight. So I'll leave the lifters in, but remove rocker arms. This is a generic valve stem seal tool kit that I got from Amazon or eBay. I don't quite remember, but let's see if it's going to get the job done. First step, go around with a socket and smack on the valves to loosen up the springs, but make sure that the piston is not at top. I replaced one seal off camera just to make sure the tool works the way I imagined it, and it does. We are going to use compressed air to hold valves in place once we remove valve keepers. You can also use the rope method, but I don't recommend it because it's more time consuming and you're going to introduce a lot of junk into the cylinders. You need a tool like this, which screws into the spark plug hole and then you can attach air hose to it. And you also need to regulate that air pressure to about four or five bar. No need to go higher than that. We're going to start with cylinder number one, which is already a top dead center. You want to make sure the piston is at the top because if the airline fails and this valve drops in, it's going to hit the top of the piston and then you can use a magnet to pull it back up. Otherwise, if the piston is all the way down, then the valve is going to go all the way in and then you're going to have to remove heads to retrieve it. You also need to make sure the crank is completely locked. It can't move in either direction because when you're pumping compressed air into the chamber, it's going to want to push the piston down, which can turn the crank. And we don't want that because then the valve can drop in as well. So screw in the tool first. No need to go crazy tight with this, just snug. There's an O-ring that creates the seal like that. This is the tool and we're going to use the studs on the head to help us compress the spring. So I got washers here and then I went to the software store and bought sleeves. And then just use nuts from the camshaft to secure it out in place. Snug it up. And now the second part of the tool. Now we need to position and lock the tool in place. This is the attachment that came with the kit. And here you can regulate the pressure. Four bar is all we need. Connect the airline. And now we're gonna start compressing the spring. Once the valve keepers are exposed, you can use a magnet to collect them. There's the first one and the second half. Now release the tension. Collect the spring. There's a washer on the top. And there's our culprit, worn out seal. So get pliers around it and pull it out. It's super easy because they're, well, worn out. Now I'm gonna use Q-tips to clean. Now plenty of oil. And now the little condom, which is going to help us install new seal safely. More oil. Here's the new seal, all looped up. And now you can use a socket or whatever you have to press it into place. It doesn't take a lot of force. Pull out the condom. Put the spring back on and get the tool going again. I'm gonna use tiny tweezers to put valve collette back in place. One half back in place. And the second one as well. And that's it. Now we can turn off the air supply. Also use paper towels to plug drain holes in the head. 
because if you drop something it's gonna go straight to the bottom of the engine into the old pan. Here are the old seals, hard as a rock, both of them, while the new one is nice and soft. And it's my understanding that you don't want to use original BMW seals because for whatever reason they don't last, you want to use the ones from Erling. As to why they don't last as long, it is a combination of things in my opinion, way too long oil change interval from the factory, and whoever is supplying these parts to BMW, the quality of this rubber is just not that great. On top of that, these engines, they run very hot, 105 degrees Celsius. So everything in it just gets cooked. Therefore, we're going to use 90 degree thermostat, which is going to help and prolong the life of these little guys, as well as of the engine. Okay, the tool is hitting my tool here. So you're gonna use flexible line. There you go. I covered the pliers with tape so we don't accidentally scratch the valve. There it is. Now we need to rotate the engine, but before we do that, we're gonna spray some fogging oil for men in cylinder number one, because we were pushing a lot of air through it. So now we need to get cylinder number two to top that center. So now you're gonna remove our locking tool and rotate the crank, grab the timing chain and pull all the slack out of it. All right, that's TDC. Take the camera out and now we need to lock the crank. This is how I lock the crank, pry bar in between the subframe and the floor. So you can't move in either direction. Come to me, Colette. Need to make sure all this is nice and clean. Oil, condom, lubed up seal. Clean spring. And from here, it's rinse and repeat. Of course, the tool has to be repositioned, different extension used or whatever. And the most difficult ones are going to be, of course, cylinder number four and number eight on that side. All right. And that's bank one, done. That really wasn't too bad. I thought the last two valves on cylinder number four are gonna be really bad, but not too difficult. Now we're going to clean. Now you're gonna do a little bit of vacuuming. So we need to clean up all of the mating surfaces. Now we need to put the engine on top dead center and lock the crank, which means the piston in cylinder number one needs to be at the very top. You can stick your camera in there, then rotate the crank and see where the piston is or use a screwdriver. But much easier, you can look at bank two. And as you're getting closer to TDC on cylinder number one, lobes on cylinder number five, which is the first one on this side, they are going to point upwards under an angle opposite of each other. And then just lock the crank and that's it. Pull the chain. There we go. Camshaft lobes and cylinder number five should be pointing exactly like that. Now we can start putting back rock rounds, but first we're gonna pull hydraulic lifters and clean them. Very cleaner and compressed there. And then lube them up generously. Clean the hole as well. Fill it up with oil and put the lifter back in place. For the rock rams, same thing, brake cleaner, compress there and lube them up. Make sure they clip properly and that you put everything back in its original position. That's everything clean and reinstalled. Now go around and squirt some more oil. Now I'm gonna go clean the camshaft the same way, brake cleaner, compress there and then coat it with fogging oil for men clean and lubed up exhaust camshaft going back in. 
We're gonna reinstall it the same way we took it out. You need to make sure that the lobes and cylinder number two are pointing up. And you also need to make sure that all of the rocker arms are sitting properly and they didn't slip out. Very important. Beautiful. Next, we need to make sure that these compression rings are closed and pointing up. And they are. We are first installing caps from two to five. Clean it, lube it up with oil and put it back in place. Clips for the oil spare bar. Now tighten these nuts evenly from inside to out. Now grab a torque wrench and torque from inside to out to 14 Nm. Now we need to rotate the exhaust cam in direction of rotation until the lobe on cylinder number one is pointing upwards towards the intake. You need a short handle here, which I don't have, so I'm gonna use two spanners. And it's gonna snap into place pretty much. That's the exhaust camshaft reinstalled. Make sure rock arm's all in place. Get these guys in place. Now go around and make sure none of the rock arms popped out. Lastly, rotate the intake cam anti-clockwise until the cam lobe is pointing downwards and these two marks are flush with the head. Like that. Now we're gonna reinstall Vanos gears and time bank one. Pull all the slack from the chain. Brand new Vanos bolt. Get it finger tight. And then loosen it half a turn. Pull the chain all the way up. And now you need to press on the timing chain tensioner and install the intake gear. That's in. Finger tight and then loosen it half a turn. Brand new upper chain guide with a fresh gasket. You can also install this guide before you install the gears. Doesn't really matter. Now we're gonna grab our timing tool and put it on the intake side. Make sure it's sitting flush with the cylinder head. Now you're gonna get the special tool, screw it through the timing chain guide where the oil sprayer bolt lives to keep this in place. And now we can tighten this Vanos bolt, counter hold the camshaft and torque the bolt to 80 millimeters. Same deal with the exhaust cam. Remove the locking tool, and then we're gonna do two full rotations, and lock it again, and verify the timing. One. Intake side. Exhaust side. And that's the timing on bank one set correctly. For the sake of it, I always like to do this more than once. If you feel any resistance, stop what you're doing and panic. Muy excelente. Now I'm gonna clean the old spare bar, get some brake cleaner and make sure none of the holes are plugged. Should flow nice and easy like that. And compressed there. and then fogging off the mat. Clip it and tighten it. Now you're gonna attack bank two and we need to remove this upper timing cover. So I'm gonna remove the pulleys, the alternator, and we're also going to replace the alternator seal bracket. C 
Same dealio, plugged with vanos solenoids. Now the alternator. Unplug the connector. The upper timing cover is leaking, so yet another good reason to do this. You need to be a witch to get this one. Don't make me get a pry bar. Oh. And you can see that it was leaking here. Same process as on the other side, remove the old spare bar and the timing chain guide. Pull out the gear. Pay attention here, these gears are different, even though they look the same. So intake side has in written on it and the exhaust side has X. Now we're gonna remove the intake camshaft and first we're going to rotate it anti-clockwise until the lobes on cylinder number eight, which is the last one, are positioned horizontally. And also you can see some writing on the cam right over there. So let's start. There you can see the writing and that the lobes on cylinder number eight are positioned horizontally. The exhaust cam, we need to rotate clockwise until the lobes on cylinder number six are pointing up. Yeah, completely loose. That's the last valve on cylinder number eight. You can see how the spring is compressed and I'm gonna put back the valve keepers in place. A bit tight because of the steering shaft, but not too bad, not too bad at all. Beautiful. And with that sound, we are done. To sum it up real quickly, here we have 32 worn out valve stem seals. The intake side was particularly bad. In fact, so bad I could pull them off with my fingers. The exhaust side was a bit better, but still none of these are good. This is hard plastic and they were definitely not sealing properly, which is what was causing our blue smoke issue. These are the essential tools that you need for this job if you're removing camshafts, obviously the timing toolkit. And this is not that expensive, around 150 euro. This is the name of the brand. You can get them as low as 30 or 40 euro, but I wouldn't recommend that. Get the one that seems like good quality. I think this one is made in Germany, something like that and you're gonna use it more than once, definitely, if you have this engine. Long magnet, pliers to pull the seals off. This one comes with a kit and it works great on the intake side because you have plenty of room. On the exhaust side, you need something a bit smaller, a bit shorter, so just standard pliers with a bit of tape on the top so you don't accidentally scratch the valve. And don't pull on the seal, just twist it, which will break the seal and then you can pull it off super easily. Tweezers, this for me by far works the best to put valve keepers back in place. Just takes a few seconds. Maybe get ones that are a bit longer. It's flexible line to put compressed air through the spark plug hole into the cylinder and hold the valve up in place. You can use the pipe type as well. And then you need to regulate that air pressure as well. Don't go over four bar, it's not really necessary. And then this is like a socket type tool that comes in the kit. Actually not this one in a different one but you can use a socket or whatever to push the seal in place. And this tool works wonderfully. It's very versatile and it's brilliant design because this is how I use it pretty much all the time. You can just reposition it how you need it and it's gonna compress the spring super easily. You need two sleeves or just a bunch of washers on the intake side because the studs are longer there. I have two washers here. This toolkit is not the greatest quality, but for the money, I think around 100 euros, it's great value and it makes this job super easy. So I'll leave the link to this toolkit in the description. Now I'm gonna clean all of this, including the lifters and put rocker arms back in place. Boop! Fogging all for men for the cylinders. So rotate clockwise until lobes and cylinder one. The exhaust side is pointing up 
and the intake side is pointing down. Same as before. Exhaust cam going in. Cam lobes on cylinder number six should be pointing up. Locks here closed and pointing up as well. Locking tabs on the cab three and five. Now we need to rotate the exhaust cam anti-clockwise until the cam lobe on cylinder number five is pointing in this direction here. Now we need to rotate the intake cam clockwise until the lobe on cylinder number five is pointing in that direction. Brand new upper guide with a brand new gasket. Grab the exhaust vanos gear that says AUS or X as in exhaust. Pull all of the slack from the chain. Press the tensioner and install the gear. Get the timing tool on the intake cam. Now we can remove the locking tool and we need to do two full rotations and verify that the timing is set correctly. Intake. Sitting perfectly flush. Gonna verify bank one as well. Yep, that's perfect. That's perfect as well. And that's it. The engine is timed correctly. As far as I'm concerned, short of dropping the engine and removing the heads, this is the best way to do valve stem seals on N62 engine. Yes, with the special tools, you'll be removing less parts and you're not gonna mess with the timing, which is a plus. But in my book, that's a minus because this way you're doing a much thorough job. We're going to remove vano solenoids and clean them, refresh the O-rings, refresh the upper timing cover gaskets. For example, that one over there was leaking. And when you have the cams off, you can clean the entire head, the lifters and all of it, because when you're running around the engine and it's open like this, inevitably some crap and dust is gonna end up in it. It's probably negligible, but to me, it's very important to do nice clean job. Not to mention it's going to be a lot easier to replace the valve stem seals when everything is off. I don't even know how you get to the last ones without special tool, but whatever. If you feel comfortable retiming the engine and removing and putting back camshafts, I highly recommend going down this route. And it's going to be useful to learn this if you ever need to replace timing chain guides. And with that, we are going to end this episode here. In the next one, we'll continue putting this thing back together the right way. The lead engineer must have been Mickey Mouse. Have a blast. I love this thing. How sparks. And Mutsi is back. Do you even know where you are? As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.